Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive, and I was looking at some baseball VR games. I thought, you know what would be fun in VR? Hitting a baseball. And uh, there actually wasn't a lot of really good reviews, uh, ones that, for baseball games that really excited me. They either had some of the old VR problems, graphics, I didn't like. Some of them, you just kind of bunted the ball and it would like shoot to a home run. And I was thinking, how hard could it be to make a baseball game? So, that's what I did. Decided to make a baseball game in VR. Now, it's not a full baseball game, it's just a batting practice game. A full baseball game would be pretty nuts because you'd actually need like nine people on each side and a batting roster and something for people to do while they're waiting around and a server to host that large of a game. And it would really just be quite the endeavor. For me, I just wanted to be able to just get pitched a ball and bat. You know, a dad replacement, right? I actually had to do quite a bit of programming to make that happen. So let's talk about why something so simple like swinging a ball at a bat is hard. In practice isn't too bad. Getting a bat mesh in there and swinging a mesh at another mesh at a bunch of pickup cubes, you can just bust the pickup cubes everywhere. So the physics are there. So why is it so hard to make a baseball game? Well, first off, it's gotta feel like a baseball game and that requires a lot of model hunting and stuff because you need things to actually look like a baseball game. So the first thing I did is I actually bought a little $5 pack on the Unreal Store, I'll link it below. This pack is pretty great because it just has a bunch of sports stuff and so now if I want to make something like hockey or something or if I just want a reference to a basketball, I have it. I just have access to sports now. I got into making video games because I wanted to make things to make people feel like I felt when I played Zelda. But what I'm actually doing is making sports sims, so life, right? When you pick up the bat, there's a problem because when you pick it up, uh, you just pick it up any old way. So you have to like go in and fix the collisions and then pick up the bat and then you're holding the bat and you have to set it to where it holds it in the right spot every time because you don't want it to just like pick it up at a weird spot. Uh, to do the Half-Life Alex thing where everywhere you pick it up is perfect is a little bit out of scope for me. I just needed it to go right where the way you're supposed to hold a bat with your right or left hand. So, boom, I did that. I got that going. And just I'm in a blank room just swinging a bat around trying to make it feel good. And the problem is it doesn't really feel like baseball unless you have two hands on it. I wanted the second hand to be able to manipulate it a little bit too. Uh, but the problem with that, it didn't work exactly how I expected. So what I ended up going with is the second hand doesn't really do much except like lock to position and that actually does a lot psychologically. When you're pretending to hold a bat to see your hand where it's supposed to be when you're swinging it, it makes you kind of keep it where it's supposed to be. So that actually really, really helped a lot. The released version, there is a version that you can play right now. I have it mapped perfectly for the right hand, but when you do left hand, I'm going to have to do a few number adjustments there. So I got the bat grabbable and I wanted to just go ahead and make the baseball grabbable too. So I made the baseball grabbable so if you actually can catch the baseball in the batting sim. I fixed all the collisions and stuff to where now it really kind of starts to feel like you're playing with a ball and a bat. Boom! Now I'm ready to add something to pitch the ball at me in an empty room. Making a ball pitcher and making a gun is pretty much the same thing. Uh oh, I just said making a gun on YouTube. What I did is just pretty much make a tube and just simulated a ball coming out of the tube at you. So after that, it was pretty seamless. I imported the base from the VR pack and, and then I was standing on a base and was pitching a ball at me and it felt like baseball already. So that was actually really super easy, getting to the point to where you just had a ball being pitched at you and you could hit it. But that's where it gets tricky. Everything after this is what actually made it baseball. First problem is there's no sound effects or anything. So I fixed it to where, uh, first off, I figured it'd be like a pneumatic. I imagine my little baseball pitcher is more of a pneumatic pitcher. So I wanted something that sounded kind of boop, airy. Um, so I found like on uh, freesound.org, like uh, someone pulling a cork out of a champagne bottle and I EQ'd it to where the super bassy, so it sounded bigger. So that way it found kind of, kind of crack. I don't know, I'll play the sound instead of try to emulate it for you. The next problem is the bat. So I set up to where you could swing the bat and hit it. Uh, and it made a nice cracking sound. Um, I could have set it up to where it played a random cracking sound every time, but even then it didn't quite feel right. So I set it up to where it actually randomly manipulates the sounds to where uh, sometimes it's a really high pitch sound, sometimes low pitch sound. I just add it to where it just kind of plugged in some rando numbers in the sound manipulation and it actually fixes the 
sound effect problem because every time you hit it, you get a little bit of a different sound. And a lot of times your brain kind of lines it up, right? You get a good crack, it makes sense. You go kick sometimes, it, ha it has a like higher pitch sound like when you chip it. It really just does a great job of emulating a baseball sound with only one sound effect. So I learned a lot right there about sound effects and that was awesome. But I needed some more randomization because right now it was pitching perfect to the dead center of the strike zone every time. So I had to set it up to where it had a little bit of randomization, but not too much uh, in the power it was pitching. So it would pitch a little faster, a little to the right, a little to the left. And so when I plugged those random numbers in, boom, now I had something that would pitch within the strike zone. I never left a strike zone. My least favorite part about baseball is not swinging. Like, oh, it's a ball, don't swing. So now what I had was pretty fun. Uh, it, I could pop the headset on and just swing at a randomized pitch. Uh, and have the sound effects there and I was hitting the ball but I was in an empty room still and I wanted some more feedback on was it a foul ball was it a fair ball I wanted to not feel like I was in a batting cage I wanted to feel like I was on a baseball field and on one way I wanted to do that it was really important to me not to have a GUI so I didn't want to have like tons of buttons everywhere things you had to go press and many things you had to change or something you had to hit before it pitched so I set up to where it automatically pitches every six seconds because because that's just the fun of it, right? I wanted to just put on the headset, get right into the fun of it. I didn't want to have to pick 100,000 things. And so it has a randomized, slightly randomized pitch every single time, every six seconds. And then I set it up to where I put a sensor on it to where it senses if it's a strike. And then I made sure that you sense if it hit the ball so it wouldn't count as a strike if you actually hit it. Then I had to put a sensor up to see if the ball was fair or foul. I actually made that way harder than it had to be. I went back and fixed it later. The program is actually getting kind of difficult at this point because now I want a billboard to display all of these stats, uh, not just so it's a secret stat, right? Because when you make something in a game, it's a secret unless you tell the player through a heads-up display. Well, in VR, I didn't want to feel like you were wearing a mask, uh, like a heads-up display. I wanted you to feel like you were in a field in Kansas playing baseball. It's got to be Kansas, too. Specifically, it had to be Kansas. So a lot of people's solution to this is they put this thing behind you, but to me, it's no fun to like be swinging and then go, let me watch the ball go, and then you like turn around and look, what's my stats? And then the ball's going, and that's no fun. So I put the billboard in front of you, but at first I thought, no, but then I could make it see-through, but then you either blocking the view of the ball or it actually hits it if you make it collide to it. A lot of issues with that. So then I just put it in the ground in front of you. So it's not 100% perfect because you can't see where the ball's going. Another idea would be to have like a score that pops up and follows the ball as it goes but it gets bigger and as it gets further away so you can still see it but that felt just it was a little too much effort for what I was going for and I, I really liked the way the billboard was feeling when I put it close. So I put it close. If it's a strike, it'll tell you if it's a strike. If it's a foul, it'll tell you if it's a foul. If it's not a foul, it'll start reporting the distance it is away from home plate. Because if I did the distance from the bat, you could manipulate that by moving the bat around. So here's the problem though. You generate a lot of balls with shooting balls into a world. So I needed to take some of these and delete them. So the balls had a little life expectancy. I had the still Unreal hands, and I didn't like the fact that it still had the Unreal hands. So I went ahead and I bit the bullet and I bought this guy's asset pack for VR hands, which is a pretty good one. It's plug and play. I didn't want to have to mess with the hands a lot because I liked the, what the hands were doing. I didn't want to have to reprogram everything just because I changed the hands. So this guy has a great asset pack. I'll link it below. And a girl, maybe? I don't know. But um, now you got hands that's not the Unreal hands. So now anytime I make a VR game, I'll actually have real hands that aren't um, VR hands, which I thought was great. I put gloves on you because one it made sense to be our batting gloves are actually combat gloves because I didn't have specifically batting gloves but the game's a dollar what do you expect so um, I didn't want to do skin tones too because I don't know what your skin tone is and if you want it to feel kind of realistic it's to me it's more immersive if you feel like you're wearing gloves than if you feel like you have hands that look more masculine or more feminine than your hands look or hands that look you know darker or lighter than your hands look I didn't want to have to worry about that because I didn't want a gooey I didn't want you to have to click a bunch of buttons and decide all these things I just wanted to be able to put on the headset and swing and hit see how far the ball went and all that stuff and I, and I feel like you can do that really well I've actually had a lot of fun testing it out I got more and more fun the more info I put on it uh, one problem I had is you know, it was actually hard to see the ball being pitched against the sky so I darkened the sky up a little bit changed color of the sky a little bit and I actually took the outfield instead of it being a perfectly flat Kansas it's got a little bit of a yaw to it now so Kansas now has 
touch of a roll of hill on the back just to make sure that there's a little less horizon so you can see the ball better. I decided not to put a trail on the ball uh, because one, I felt like that helped with the immersiveness, the realism, realism a lot. In the video, you'll see, you don't see the ball very well being pitched. That's actually in the headset, you see it at a higher frame rate, you see it in the headset, you actually have a much better chance with the sound effect and everything. You actually have a much better sense of when the ball being pitched. Uh, but to me, that was part of the fun, is trying to see the ball being pitched, because that's actually the hardest part of baseball, right? It's not this big, red, fiery comet with a tail on the end. A baseball's a little baseball. It's white, and it just kind of yeets out of the pitcher's hand, and you got to find it and look at it and swing. So even with all of that going, there's still an issue I had in the middle of it is I wanted you to be able to position yourself. So I actually set it up to where you can do a little bit of teleporting because it's mostly room scale, but I set it up to with a small teleporting box just so you could kind of get yourself teleported in a way that worked with your room because you're swinging your arms around wildly. And if you're a lefty, you need to walk to the other side of the base. So I wanted you to be able to have a little more options to manipulate yourself. But because it's room scale, you can't just go pick up the bat. I wanted you to actually grab a bat. That's really important to me. Uh, I didn't want your hand to be the bat. That was a big problem with me with a lot of these uh, other other bat simulators out there. So what I did was I took, uh, I made it to where you could grab the bat, but if the bat's let go, it checks every so often to see if the bat is not in your hand. So if you throw it on the ground, you might be able to pick it back up. But if you throw it on the ground, there's a good chance it'll just kind of disappear and reappear where you can grab it easily by home base. Uh, I did that because I didn't want you to like get angry, yeet the bat at the pitching thing, and then have to restart the game. B exits the game, and A resets the game. Uh, you should never have to reset it, but I wanted that to be an option. And B exiting the game, if you've ever played a game jam when someone doesn't make an exit button on your game, that's pretty crappy of them. So I have an exit button. Um, you don't usually hit it accidentally. There is no pausing or pause menu. I, it was really important to me. I didn't want a GUI. I didn't want a hundred buttons everywhere or a big pause menu. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about the game. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you don't like it. Let me know if it was fun to hit the ball. Let me know if you felt, um, if it felt like baseball. Let me know if it was annoying that I didn't have a GUI or if it was a good thing that I didn't have a GUI. A lot of devs are really going for the GUI thing. Uh, hardcore in VR, lots and lots of VR GUIs, and I could have done the laser pointer thing and everything. I've done it before, but it's it, to me, it's just a lot of effort for something you don't really need. So I really want your feedback on that. Like feels real when you bunt the bunts, and when you hit hard, if you swing hard and hit hard, it'll go really far. It feels like baseball. So. There you go. It's a dollar baseball sim. If you buy it, you support the channel, and it helps me make more simple games like that that I can give out. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like this video, help you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. If you are a streamer, email me because I will give it to you for free. And you're thinking, maybe I don't have a big audience though, like zero people watch everything I do. That's okay. If you promise to stream it, I will give it to you for free. So, there you go.